This is Otaku Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We dig deep into the great anime of the past to give you the context you need to fully appreciate the best this medium has to offer. Let's jam. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. This is Otaku Station, where today we'll be talking about episode three of the original Sailor Moon. Before we get into that, uh, we do have a uh, guest family uh, staying here at the station, and uh, if you've been following us, um, Bunny, their daughter, is... uh, um, Well, uh, quick update, turns out she's an anime fan now. She's been watching anime constantly ever since I sat her down in front of Goldfish Warning uh, a while back. And uh, so I think another fan is made, which is kind of awesome. Uh, But her family's uh, leaving today with her, don't worry. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, But uh, before we get into the analysis, I actually want to talk a bit about the animation of... Uh, Sailor Moon up through this third episode. So let's head into the animation room for that. Welcome to the animation room where we're going to dive into the animation of the first three episodes, at least, of Sailor Moon. And there are four things I want to call out here. The first is the overall color scheme of Sailor Moon. You'll notice here the use of a lot of pastel colors, very soft colors. And I want to call that out because when you look at modern Magical Girl series, they tend to use bright colors. Uh, Not dark ones, but bright ones. And Sailor Moon's using a a softer palette. You see even her pajamas are a light pink color. And indeed, the boombox is a kind of dusky red, not really a bright red. And I think this gives the show a really distinctive uh, color scheme. You see this in this shot as well, which is set during the late afternoon, early evening, sort of a a dusk golden hour period. And you'll notice the use in the background of more purples and pinks in very pastel colors. Where you'd think during that period of time you use more golden colors, more yellows and browns. So I think this sets apart Sailor Moon from a lot of other shows of the time or of, uh, of um, modern times. But this changes when we get to the, the battles. I find this really interesting. So you'll notice in a lot of the combat sequences, we go towards darker, stronger colors. In this case, black and white for the background, um, and then, again, stronger colors for the various characters. And I think this is intentional. This contrasts the battle scenes with what's happening in real life. Now, I should point out that the battle scenes in these three episodes all happen either indoors or at night, but we have other scenes indoors or at night in the show that don't have this high contrast color approach. So I think this is intentional to ramp up the seriousness of the combat and make it distinctive from the rest of the show. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about are the variety of camera angles in each scene. And I say that because when you get into a dialogue scene, for example, one character talking to another, an easy way to animate that is to have one shot of one character, another shot of another character, and we just cut back and forth between those shots. Sailor Moon doesn't do that. Um, Here is an example of a dialogue scene in episode one where we start with uh, Usagi and Naru, a shot of them, we have a, another shot of the woman they're talking to in one and two there. Uh, but then from there, we cut to a shot of all three of them, which adds some variety. And then another shot from a different angle. And I think this really makes the show feel a lot more dynamic than it would be if you just had these shots back and forth. This takes more time, more money to do, but it makes the show... Um, feel a little higher quality and feel a little more cinematographic, uh, if you will, uh, a little bit more um, alive than it would if you were just cutting back and forth between just the static shots of you know, close-ups of characters. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Now, um, speaking of that, I also want to talk about the 
amount of animation in some of these scenes. Here's a dialogue scene from later in the show, and episode three, in fact. And it starts with a close-up of Naru, and number one there. And there's very little animation in this shot. It's basically just there to establish that. Then we pull back a little bit. It's literally a cut to this larger shot. And there's very there's some animation in, in this, but it's almost entirely lip flap. And then an animation of Naru nodding her head. That happens twice in the shot. But it's enough to get across the conversation that's happening. You know, different people talking, Naru nods, totally fine. But then we cut to Usagi's reaction. And she has this surprised reaction to what Naru has in her hand when she opens the box. Now, that shot is both number three and number four down there. And you'll notice it starts with a very neutral expression, uh, ha you know, neutrally happy, and then a shocked expression. We kind of move from like that. Now, other shows would just show what we, what we see in panel four there. They wouldn't show that animation of her reacting because that's the main thing to get across in that shot, Usagi is surprised. But showing her emotional reaction, even though it's you know five or six frames of animation you have to draw, it brings us a little bit more into the inner minds of the audience, or I'm sorry, of the character, of Usagi. When we actually see that emotional reaction, we're pulled into her emotional state. Um, something that is expensive to do, and animation is, and anime in particular, is famous for avoiding animation until you absolutely have to animate, right? We've all seen those crowd scenes where it's just characters, you know, s standing there. Um, but Sailor Moon does go the extra mile to show some animation, even in dialogue scenes where it's not strictly necessary, and it just keeps things fresh. The fourth thing I want to talk about is how characters actually move, how naturalistic or realistic is the animation, if you will. Um, and I should be pointed out, you don't always want to be naturalistic, particularly given that Sailor Moon's a comedy, but interestingly, the characters here almost always move very realistically. How they walk, move around is very natural. Uh, in contrast to how much comedy there is in these couple of episodes. Uh, here's a shot of Usagi falling down, and you can see it's a very realistic shot of her falling on her rear end. It's just the way it would look. So that's kind of cool. When you do get really goofy moments, the animators tend to focus on facial expressions over body contortions. So um, here's a shot where there's an explosion, the characters are flying. It's a great shot, um, and you can see the focus is more on the... Uh, silly facial expressions over the granted unrealistic body motion but it's relatively realistic um, perhaps not too much but you get the idea here Usagi's running away and we're again, really focusing on her facial expression to convey the comedy over sweat drops or throbbing forehead veins or whatever else um, you know, we, we've certainly seen goofy comedy where characters you know, limbs detach and stuff like that so um, keeping this a little more grounded I think is important for a show like Sailor Moon because again it's still a magical girl series it's still about uh, Usagi and eventually the other Sailor Scouts and their experiences growing up and um, changing as people so I think keeping it more grounded in that animation was really really smart you can still have the comedy um, but it's conveyed through dialogue through facial expression uh, and not by making the characters themselves feel so unreal that we can't identify with them as as adolescent you know, people who are going through issues. Those are my thoughts on the animation of Sailor Moon. Let's head back up to the tower. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Quick update on our guests here. Um, yeah, family was all packed up, ready to leave called Bunny over and she proceeded to burst into tears and uh, doesn't want to leave because she doesn't want to stop watching anime. Um, granted, we've all had moments where we don't want to stop watching anime, but uh, oh, I think I'm going to have to deal with that. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and start in on Sailor Moon Episode 3. Unfortunately, 
John can't join us today. Apparently, there's been a rise in bear activity around his place, so he's going to be fighting bears. But meanwhile, I'm going to uh, bring Steve on here, and we'll get into Sailor Moon. All right, I think we have Steve on there. How's it going, Steve? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm just waiting for my latest batch of manga. It's taken a long time, but I'm, I'm hoping that it'll get here soon, so I'm really looking forward to it tonight. So, yeah, yeah, here I am. Cool. Hope that comes in safely and there's no, you know, water damage or anything. That, that last mile transit can sometimes really get you. <laughs> so, let's get into episode three of Sailor Moon. Indeed. That's interesting. It's just, hmm. Yeah, so we're going to actually fight what's his name here, apparently, in the episode. Cool. That's a All lot right. faster than I thought it would be. Again, kind of remarkable that they're repeating the premise. Um, right. And again, I don't know how often this could be just common in Magical Girl today to repeat the premise for the first six episodes or so. I don't know. But, hmm. And maybe this is just because we all know Sailor Moon so well. It's like, <laughs> right. Do we really need this? Okay, hold on. Jadeite, everything is going as planned. In what sense? I I was going to say, you failed spectacularly in every <laughs> single endeavor. I mean, so so failure is, is your plan? Okay. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I suppose it is also possible that he is lying through his teeth to his boss. Right. But still, it's kind of a weird line. I'm also genuinely curious. Does Queen Beryl spend all of her time gesturing around the orb? This or orb, right. Yeah. Is she um, maintaining something? Is is this Yeah, what exactly is this that she's doing? Yeah. Um because in, in the other story, right, she would be holding an audience, she'd be talking. Maybe this would be off to the side, charging power or whatever. But clearly, like, she needs to be doing the thing. Huh. And I'll note, they had to animate it, right? Yes. So there, there's constant right. movement of her hands. So it's clearly not because they felt like it. This is important. I just got hit by a nostalgia bomb. I know, right? That that sleek 80s boombox man yeah and two tape decks I, I, right so you can record yeah that's pretty slick yeah so here's something interesting yeah a radio drama you're right yeah that is what that this is this is a radio drama huh. yeah you don't really hear those anymore no definitely not and not just broadcast right right yeah fascinating <clears throat> oh Oh, dear. Oh, oh, no. In this... today's world, that would not fly. No, that is more than a little creepy, but we'll, we'll see where this goes. <laughs> it's also kind of interesting here how childishly they're portraying and animating Usagi. Yeah. Um, you know, the big, long pajamas, all that stuff. Even compared to her friend, who is in more of like a nighty. Um, right. Uh, this is a very um, immature um, look here. Yeah. I do have to say, again, this is the first Magical Girl series I've seen that I can think of that actually shows interactions between the mother and the father. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, actually kind of weird. But, um, yeah. and the other part of this is like, you're seeing 1990s Japanese work society. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. she's like, She's like, no, I don't. You don't get to sleep. You you have to work. You have to make the money, but dude. You got, you got to get out there. Get out there, salary man. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Why did you only get home at seven p.m. last night? You, know, you need to work hey, harder. You've been out there until midnight. Come on. Right. Now. Okay. That's good comedy timing. Yeah. <clears throat> that is kind of hilarious. Yeah. It's just the expression. Everything about it is just that. That's funny. Dun, 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 dun. What's going on? How could it not exist? We, we heard it, you know, and it's it's hosted by somebody named Jay Dight. Jay Dight. Who could it possibly be? Maybe. Huh. Yeah. Street Toughs. That's, it's 
what is how did you get my Yu Yu Hakusho into your Sailor Moon? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of interesting showing and he ha- that. He has a cigarette. He does. Huh. Interesting. Also, I now know what, what, why this is connected to me. That's not the Sailor Moon character design. You know, this is not what any that's of the true, other boys yeah. look like. So, wow. Right. That's odd. <clears throat> I will give him credit for the writing of her future boyfriend. And then... Right. And then, yeah. Yeah. Tuxedo mask. That's pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Who is... I mean, I'm assuming yes. that is a... Uh, bootleg Bugs Bunny. <laughs> a very rough and tumble Bugs Bunny, it looks like. Yeah. It, or, it, it's almost as if they were, like, writing, like, saying, oh, we're going to make Wolf. No, it better be a bunny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is very, like, Warner Brothers, though. Oh, yeah. That's fascinating. Huh. So I just want to point out here, it's kind of interesting that she's on the bed... And then right. they, like, take the time to animate her jumping off the bed and then going over to there. Uh, it's just a nice movement. And yeah. it just, I think, just adds a little bit more vitality and life. Again, the kind of thing that I think in modern anime they would find some way around. Um, but I just, I don't know. I really like that shot. Before the internet, there was <laughs> pictures. <laughs> Yeah, folks, this is how we knew when things were on. <laughs> we actually had to open the thing up and actually read it. Mm-hmm. That is interesting, too, the idea of how else would you verify? Right. Hmm. Pirate radio. Mm-hmm. That yellow fog that they're adding in, mm-hmm. is that new to this episode? Have they done that before? No, I feel like that, that that is actually just the light coming through the glass from the... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Good call. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's that. I really uh, thought he was going to eat it. <laughs> I really thought he was just going to be like... <laughs> you know, just like, just like from, uh, from, from, what was it, Death Note. He goes, and I'm going to take this chip and eat it. You know, it's just like, <laughs> oh, okay. Dude. All right, dude. Fair enough. <laughs> Kind of interesting. Mm. The first one is boys' voices, and the second one's girls' voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I assume, it, which is particularly odd because you think, you know, did they really expect to get <clears throat> a massive boy audience for this? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, I'm kind of curious why they did that. If not, if not just, why not? Yeah. We hired a choir. Boys are in it, so we're going to use both of them. <laughs> we paid the monies. Yep. I'm sorry. I, I, I know they're all young, but hey, the brooch that the woman who immediately fell into a coma, <laughs> let me pin that on myself and see what happens. Surely nothing bad will happen. Yeah. And none of her friends, kind of, maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe maybe there's a connection here. I don't know. Okay. Well, okay. Well, that was the thing. Unexpected. Well, that might explain why you can't just take the thing off. True. Yeah. Um, although I, I now imagine like three sleeping paramedics next to the, the victim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we figured out not to do that. <laughs> that expression. There's just something, yeah. something goofy about it. I have this glowing ball in my hands. Hey. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'll get all the chicks with it. <laughs> yeah, lay off the weed. Just just suggesting. Yeah. <laughs> Which you can also buy for four ninety nine. I was just going to say. Retailer. <laughs> yeah, th- that looks extremely marketable. Just, just saying. <laughs> okay, so it's the Secret of Akochan power. Oh, where you can, okay. you know, appear to be another person. Interesting. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. I didn't know what I expected, but I didn't expect it to her to look right. like an actual adult. Right. Exactly. Jeez. Ah. Interesting. 
So yeah, and that, that is totally the I am now going to be the adult professional version of myself. Interesting. I guess all the the, the short hair is kind of odd. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That that did. That, that like was a, hilarious. That 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 made me laugh. Uh, good on you. As goofy as this is, holy crud, Usagi! Right. You know, charging in, sitting down on the other side of the enemy, and just interrupting the broadcast totally. That that's got guts. Yeah. Dang. Um, definitely feels like a big change from episode one. Oh yeah, she should be crying by now. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. They're, the power they're of going... halitosis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but also, I just got to point out. Let me... This is full on like really uh careful animation yeah and do you do you know what this anime should re- this animation should remind you of hmm tenchi moyo you're right yeah yeah it is very tenchi like yeah this is basically ryoko in the school yeah yeah um <laughs> gas what is gas oh, yeah. um <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Um, and, I mean, Tenchi also came out, what, like a year or two before this? So it could also be yeah. a, little, a little bit playing off that. It should also be pointed out to our Tenchi reference. We also jump yeah. into a fight on a rooftop. Okay. Very much. That, that's fascinating. Huh. Oh. Dang. Um, wow. Yeah, did, did, we, did we have to see her get sliced in half? I suppose we did. Man. Gosh. Uh, again, didn't realize Sailor Moon was this graphic. I'm not going to lie, this music is so inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Throw that out there. I'm just kind of mm-hmm. like, wait, wait, did we just go from one thing to another? Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's a little mm-hmm. threatening here. Yeah. Um, also, I'm going to call it. She's going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> just a little. Mm hmm. That's an interesting reaction from Jedi. Yeah. He, he knows what this is. Interesting. Huh. All right. So they have portals. <laughs> I still love the... Thanks. Still, still love the laugh. Um, and I guess, so, contrasting episodes one, two, and three, episode one, Tuxedo Mask, provides advice uh, and right. a distraction. Episode two, he... More just provides a distraction and then runs off. Uh, right. uh, and this, again, is just a distraction. He's just kind of... Uh, well, and you also get the sense that, I guess, Jada knows who Tuxedo Mask is. And so by Tuxedo Mask announcing him, Jadeite's like, this is more than I'm willing to bargain with. I'll leave. Um, yeah. So not just interrupting, also kind of forcing a retreat. Okay. I, I still can't get over how much of a screwball comedy Sailor Moon is. Yeah. Uh, for much of its running time. Like, the first half of this was basically all comedy. So, I so here's the thing. Yeah. Um, for this one, the the fight sequence between the Demoness and, and Sailor Moon was, like, really kind of, like, really almost shown in. I mean, that was yeah. just, like, just, like, that, that was just, like, and it was quick. So it wasn't like, you know, you had a whole lot of the doing the thing before I take the tiara and throwing it at you. Like it was, it was pretty you know, like, okay, halitosis attack, you know, right. and then right. right and th- I mean, it just moved very, very quickly. Yeah. And the animation for it was actually very, very well done. Even when yeah. they did the single cells like this. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, you know, they, they spent a little time on this, a little bit of money. I completely agreed. This felt much more, uh, adventure-y. It, it felt much yeah. more like a like an action show. Um, I think also, and I'll, I'll give them full credit for the fact that, again, Sailor Moon knows what she's doing now, so they can't yeah. have her just, you know, not sure what she's doing. Notice she didn't cry this time. Yeah. Uh, she, she, she was close to it, but she's kind of holding her own as best she can. Uh, so we're, we're seeing an evolution there. So we, you know, the action kind of has to be quicker because she knows, okay, bad guy, moon tiara action, right? All right. Um, I'm intrigued that uh, three episodes in, we're getting our second item. Um, mm-hmm. 
Uh, I wonder what the pace of those is going to be. And I also wonder how often she'll use the pencil. Um, or will we forget about it in three episodes? <laughs> right. Oh, that was a one-time use thing. That, that, that was there we go. Yeah, there we go. go. We can't have Usagi being looking like a 27-year-old <laughs> yeah. um, commentator. Yeah, but yeah, man, I mean, she runs right in there and just gives him what for. Yeah. That was very interesting um, to get that that confrontational nature of Usagi there. Uh, good on her. I also do like all the, the details of the recording studio, like the latch on mm-hmm. the door you know, obviously the the staff are spending all their time in recording studios, so they know what this is, looks like. <laughs> Just a lot of you know, realism there. How would you contrast, or is there anything else you do to contrast <clears throat> this episode of uh, Sailor Moon with the previous two? Um, how, how are you seeing it different? Um, well, Usagi is, is definitely not being the crybaby anymore. And she's being more, a little bit more proactive, yeah. I think. You know, like like she's deciding, even though it wasn't that she knew that Midnight Zero was something off, mm-hmm. but she was just like, oh, I want to talk to this guy, so I'm going to do the thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm going to go out there and do it. And I think it's just kind of interesting how, like, even though she can't put two and two together with the, bro- <laughs> with the brooch, yeah. And apparently none of them can. Yeah. Um, but I just I think it's kind of interesting how like they were able, they were willing to spend a little bit of time to explain something to you, which was, oh, here's why we can't just take have yeah, someone else just go, yeah. okay, this is weird, and take that off. True. Well, that's gonna you know affect other people. That's gonna affect you as well. And we have this great scene where we are establishing the romance, the budding romance between Tuxedo Mask and Usagi, as if you could not forecast that for <laughs> zero episodes. Um, but it's kind of interesting how, like, they really wanted to do the long, drawn-out hi. <laughs> you know, it's just like bringing the glasses down or whatever. But it's, but it's one of those things where it's just like, if you were a girl and you like magical girl shows and you're of a certain age where you are into boys now, yep. this is a thing. This is yep. like, oh, oh, okay, do we get the reveal? Do, do, we know who it is, but is Usagi going to finally figure out who this is and can we go on with that story? And no, it's the classic bait and switch or tease, or if you will, of just like going, will they, won't they? Yeah. You know, kind of a... And full credit to the show for introducing this so early and kind of layering it all through the through the story that you have all these breadcrumbs to follow especially if you're not paying attention you know this is something that's coming on you're catching it as catch can uh and so you you'll eventually figure it out and all of these pieces can uh can lead you there yeah totally it's weird thinking of a time when sailor moon was new i know right like somebody would have said, "Oh, I wish I had a I had a boombox like that. Yeah. That's so cool." <laughs> right? I was just like, and, and, you know. Meanwhile, in today, mm-hmm. uh, yep, it's all there. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, and 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 I just I wonder how many people who are young enough who watch this for the first mm-hmm. time go, why why are they looking in the newspaper? Right. Yeah. Figuring out the show time for a radio show. Why wouldn't you know that? Wouldn't you be able mm-hmm. to look that up fairly quickly? And the, and the idea of writing a letter in. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the idea of a show where they read love letters as a subject. Yeah. You know, as as that that is the show. So many people are lost from the whole Casey Kasem era. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and we have a letter from Tom out in New Brunswick who wants to write about, I really met this girl last summer and I can't find her. You know, it's just like one of those things where it's just like, you know, yeah. they, they do those things out there to, to grab you and pull you in. But nowadays we, nobody has to do that you know, yeah. <clears throat> anymore. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah. And also getting things. Like, yeah. I remember this, like getting mm-hmm. things from radio stations from from like if you wrote in a letter or something like that, sometimes you get promotional items back. Mm-hmm. Nobody really does that anymore. You know, 
I remember a kid as a kid running into uh, to, the, to the Baltimore Orioles one time, and just you know saying something about the mascot, you know something fun about the mascot. I was like ten, hmm. and they sent me back a letter, a thank you letter, with wow. a with a little sticker. Ah, that's nice. The Baltimore Orioles sticker. I was just like, going, oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, it's just it's. I, I, I just keep going back to how comedic this is and how yeah. I think that's a really smart choice when you're kicking off a magical girl series. Like there's not a lot else to do uh, without it being just kind of very generic and bland of, Oh, I'm a girl. Oh, I have this power. What happens next? Uh, I think that yeah. really helps to keep the interest and, and keep you watching. Yeah. I, I gotta tell you though, when the the teacher comes up to to the lectern in their class, <laughs> I have such azumin azumin diode yes I have vibes on that on her. I, I was just like, <laughs> God. I'm like I'm like there is a direct re- correlation between this and that. I think. yeah, but I, you know I I can definitely see that. And again, getting back to the, to the, the our earlier points. It's relatively transgressive to show a teacher being like this, you know, yes. somebody in power, um, but to, to throw her under the bus like this, so to speak, as, a, yeah. <laughs> as an authoritative figure. It's like, wow, okay, Sailor Moon. I, I know we get, we get like early on, she's like, oh, she wrote her love letter. God, she would be fired so fast. <laughs> fired so fast. Yeah. I, but, I guess. And, and, and th- I, think, I guess, and, in fairness, it's just writing a love letter to a, uh, you know, it's not to a student, right? right it's yes. just a thing to a, 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 a radio station. So, you know, it's still weird. Right. Mm. But I'm sorry. I just love how, like, at the end of it, where, where you know, she's, like, chasing after the the love letter as well Usagi and she are just like chasing after her and and wanting to know it's just like, yeah you're, you're a teacher but right. then again that's that you know gives rise to the whole screwball comedy of this thing true um, absolutely and I guess also playing off the fact that teachers at the time were meant to know a lot about their students were meant to do home visits were meant to like be very involved in their in their students' right. lives so uh, and obviously this is a a comedic version of that. Uh, I'm right. not saying this is <laughs> this is realistic in any way, uh, <laughs> but but having fun with that idea, I guess. Uh, also, it should be pointed out how the uh, the bad guys are involving Usagi's like close relations too. You know, her yes. teacher, her friend, not directly. But it, it adds to that, you know, strong connection to the story that I think a lot of magical girls don't do, where it's just random people getting hurt or getting infected or whatever. Yeah. This has uh, that, that really direct thing, which, again, I think gets, gets over, um, uh, gets, gets Usagi past her crybabiness because she has to protect them. Right. And you know what we haven't seen so far? What plot device we haven't seen? Hmm. Do they know who you are, Usagi? True. Good point. Yeah. Um, we also still haven't seen any other Sailor Scouts. Nope. Uh, not even a hint of them. No. And it kind of surprising. Oh, we, we, we haven't even heard, gotten a thing of Sailor V at all. No, you're right. This episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're really just letting it lie for a while. Um, interesting. Huh? Any other thoughts? Not what I was expecting. No, absolutely not. So now that we're at the the end of this run of Sailor Moon, um, to that point, how would you like recommend Sailor Moon to people? To whom would you recommend it to? Uh, and especially con- contrasted to how you would before. Like, what is your take on Sailor Moon now? Um, so. You know, this this is definitely I, I I would say that like my for example my niece I think would like would in, would enjoy this and um you know I would I would be I would tell people like okay it is not your your average magical girl show there's some stuff going on here and, and um 
but it's it's funny it's actually hilarious in certain parts and it's not just a little girl just being transforming and then doing the thing and that's it and there's the monster of the week it's still a monster of the week but it's more involved and there seems to be a plot moving forward and uh, again this is you know again this is not for people who are you know really not into magical girls but still it'd be one of those things where it's just like I could totally see like hey I have a kid who's into anime what should I watch with them yeah here you absolutely. go absolutely right 100% agreed you could almost say at least these episodes are a comedy with a magical girl component yes yes um, and occasional horror yeah uh, <laughs> Jake horror. <laughs> I, um, I could just see some parents just going as the, the monster's being cut in half. Um, <laughs> honey? <laughs> um, they're a bad guy. It's okay. They're, yeah. they're bad bad people. Yeah, yes. It's okay to cut people in half with your tiara if they're a bad... Wait, no. What do I say? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the lesson we're trying to walk away with. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it's also, I think, one of those shows where it, it's got a number of disparate elements that all mesh really well. Yeah. Um, you know, the comedy, the magical girl, the, the scariness of the villains, the sense of the overall plot. Uh, I think it all feels of a, of a piece. Yeah, in a really effective way. Yeah. yeah, interesting. All right, that is it for episode three of Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. Moon. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Good news. I did manage to pack up Bunny and send her on her way. Got her a little bit of tea as well as went down scrounging in the archives and found some anime to send off with her. So a little gift for her journey, hopefully some stuff that she'll uh, enjoy in the future. And to that point, quick reminder, you know, get some anime physically just so that you uh, always have access to it, or at least as long as the media survives. But uh, uh, yeah, there's something that you really care about. It's not a bad idea to get a, a physical copy um, so that you can refer to it back whenever you want to. But uh, that'll do it for this time. Thanks for watching. Until next time, watch more anime.